Arizona 7, UCLA 7. Inside of 30 seconds with Notre Dame driving against Stanford. The Cardinal leading. Here it's Arizona. Two downs to get a first down for Dick Tomey. Great house short of the first down. Some of the first quarter numbers. Now fourth down. He's got an option to go for the field goal or try for the first down. I'll take a look at these numbers. You watch the coaching staff. The I important one is that we're tied at seven. 113 total yards for Arizona, 80 for UCLA. Dick? We're at the, you know, UCLA hasn't established a running game yet. I now also, I think, in time of possession, time of possession is in favor of Arizona. A timeout has been called on the field. You know, Arizona has been very good in converting fourth down situations coming into this ball game. The reason why they call time we get word is because Michael Bates was shaken up. But the more important reason is what to do here. In the first half, you can use your timeouts early in a ball game. You want to decide. And well, now Costin trots onto the field. He doesn't want to gamble. He'll set up a field goal. There is a light breeze. Dick, what about the Rose Bowl for kicking field goals? How did you find it? I was only here one time. Oh, well, what a time. <laughs> yeah. In the upset Ohio State. And the field goal didn't make a difference. But anytime you kick into the wind, you're, you have a problem. And the flags aren't swirling. They're all going in the same direction. This is what a 46 yard field goal upset and we'll take you to Palo Alto next Saturday afternoon for the Trojans of USC against Stanford which just upset number one. How about that. Great job of coaching. We've seen Stanford play real well on tape twice this year. It's it's not surprising they could play that well today. Now the field goal attempt by Arizona. It's a fake. They roll out and they'll throw back to Costin. He's got, got it. it first down. They called it out. They called him out of bounds. Wait, I think they called him out of bounds. Adam Brand threw it back and it was out of bounds on that far side. Here's the holder. He's putting the ball down. Now watch, they fake the kick. He jumps up. Now you see Costin number 11 heading down the sideline. He throws his ball. It's just a little bit high on the outside. He hasn't got a good spiral. Ooh, that looked like it might have been in. It looked like his feet might have touched. Taking a look, right-hand corner of the screen. Let's watch the feet. Ooh, on the line. Out of bounds. Good call. That's Dick Tomey. Wow, you better stay awake close, when you coach against it? his team. Just what you warned me about. He'd try anything. First and ten for the Bruins. Wow. Toss. Battled his way for about three yards. Let's take one more look. Dick, watch carefully the left foot here by Costin, the kicker. Here he is. He's going up for the ball. He looks like a wide receiver. <laughs> He's coming down, coming down, feet going to touch. They're still in the air. Ooh, I think it's on the line. I think it's on the line. Difference in college. The NFL, only one foot has to be in bounds. Second down, Maddox out of the shotgun. Steps away from the rush, and he will run for a Bruin first down. Out to the 45-yard line. Ball came free, but it was whistled dead at the 45. He ran for a huge first down on Saturday night against Washington State. Well, this is, they don't want him to run, but by gosh, when they've got people covered and he sees that running lane, he has the ability to take it. Not known for sprinter speed, good athlete and agility. Here he goes. He says, heck, I'm a runner right now. Darren Case, number 50, will come in on him right there and miss him. There's Eric Wade, number 44, trying to make play in, gets him down. Ball at the Bruins, 45. First and 10 for UCLA. The Bruins in Arizona tied at seven. Bear defense. Brown into it, and with that spin move of his, he gets about four more yards. He's used that move on two kickoff returns, and now he shows it coming out from scrimmage. Usually that's something you don't do by thinking about it. You just do it instinctively. It's just part of your style of running. They have to establish that running game because if just if you get in and just have to throw the ball 40 or 50 times, I, I think it could uh, you know really be a long day for you, Ceiling. Second down. Audible. Smith checking for the snap count again as he turned his head. Back stay in the block. Complete. 
to the 45-yard line. Well, the story that we've been monitoring, Stanford and Notre Dame. Roger, how did the Cardinal pull it off? And Tommy Bardell with four touchdowns, but this is the last play of the game. Meyer is back, and he's got his big tight end. Derek Brown open, he drops it. After those two immaculate receptions, if you will, against Michigan and Michigan State, bad luck befalls Notre Dame. Stanford beats him by five. Back to you, Brent. What an ending. But I think, Roger, you put your finger on it. You run a little shy of luck after a while. Great fake by Maddox. He'll go long over the middle. As you take a look at this play from the end zone, watch the fake by the quarterback, Maddox. He fakes, he reverses, he fakes a hard toss. Now he pumps left there, now turns back right. He does that to keep the safety. Now he's got a one-on-one -on -one situation on the cornerback that we were raving about, Darrell Lewis. They've been behind him a couple times. <laughs> this one counts. Speaking of speed, UCLA, Brad Aloiso to attempt his second extra point, makes it 14 to 7. A fake field goal fails by inches. If that, UCLA takes over and marches to its second score. What a dandy, Bruin and Pasadena. Scott Miller from El Toro, California, 5'11", 177-pound senior. Two catches, 40 yards and 45 yards, and two touchdowns. And if you put him in a track meet, he'd be out running Lewis. Now bringing it back is Bates. Speaking of track meets, <laughs> and he crashes his way out to the 31-yard line, and Arizona will go back in with its offense trailing again. Here comes George Malaula. There's the quarterback change. He's a left-hander. Scott Miller with his 45-yard touchdown reception, making it 14-7. Now the left-hander will try to drive Arizona and get them back. Now, he's not upset with Veal. He planned to use both quarterbacks in this game. Malaula is a more efficient passer. So what does he do? Fumble, Fumble UCLA ball. Let's see, did they Wait call it down? Yes, oh, Terry's did. upset. You can see his down. reaction from the sideline. The entire defensive team. I'm not sure that was a good the call field. because the ball came out of the in the air, not down low to the turf. We'll take another look, looking from the end zone. See the ball be to the right. There it is. He's in the air. He's in the air. Oh, that's a fumble. Hey, but right in front of the official, that's a fumble. Umpire was looking the right The umpire, at Jim Coyne, should have been able to see that. Maybe he was too close. You know, it's funny. I was down with the officials before the game, and they're starting to say right now that that's the toughest call that they have to make. Yeah. Terry, he blew it. But it's all right. It's only a game. A matter of life and death. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he, what did he poke his head in the door before we met with him yesterday, and he looked right at you and said, there's more to life than football. Boy, did you disagree with him. <laughs> Second down and long. Malulu off a fake. Hits one on the outside for a first down. McGill into the arms of Eric Turner. That was Vaughn. Let me correct that. Number nine and number eight out there. That was number nine. That was Terry Vaughn and not number eight. Terry Vaughn, I'll tell you, you know, uh, is a real quick guy. Watching him on the practice field in Tucson Thursday, when he gets the ball in that open air, and out there in the perimeter like that, he can make you miss. Good speed. What about Malaulu's ability to run their option? Oh, that? he can run. He can run. He's a fine football player right out of Carson High School here in Southern California. Rounding the fullback. Stridenick 
Stacy Argo with the stop. Mike Strydnick, he's one of those overachievers as a football player. He didn't have that breakaway speed. In fact, didn't you tell me he walked on and... Yeah, he was not given a scholarship. He earned a scholarship just through hard work and dedication, weight trainer. He's a sociology major. He bench presses 408 pounds. Now, that's a lot of weight when you only weigh 238. That's a lot of weight. What do you bench press? <laughs> I was afraid. I was really afraid that you were going to ask I set you me. up. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's embarrassing. How much does a microphone weigh? <laughs> Second down. Malulu straight back. Fires one left-handed. Complete Beautiful inside catch. the 20-yard line. Richard Griffith, the tight end, and Arizona threatens. What happened here is they took the back out in motion, stretched the defense, and hit the tight end right down the seam here. Uh, clear it. There we go. Now you'll see the man in motion. He's going to stretch the defense horizontally. Now the safety comes in there. He's been wide and there's more field to defense. Here comes the safety. Well thrown. Great catch by Griffith. Number 85. 13 more yards. In case you just joined us. Stanford upset Notre Dame and South Bend. Here are Arizona trailing by seven. McGill off the option. Out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Eric Turner, we've called his name and number all game long, number 29. How good a safety is he for UCLA? He, he's a good safety, you know, and sitting in the stands in Tucson watching him practice Thursday, Leon, uh, Lawrence McCutcheon, this pro scout, former great running back from the Rams, was there uh, scouting him, and he says the NFL people really like this senior safety. Now, will the NFL folks have some question marks about Lewis and the way Miller is motoring past him here in the Well, his, uh, his uh, dollar value is going down a little bit right now. <laughs> But he's a fine player, and he'll come up with a big play somewhere along in this ballgame. Unbalanced line right. They'll run behind it, Dick. Mattel for the first down. Yeah. If I were going to run behind anybody, I would love to run behind Nick Finian Ganafo at right guard at 6'5", 312 pounds, and his buddy I lined up outside of him at 6 foot 4 343 pounds these guys are giants and just young football players they can block holes in the line of scrimmage how would you like to line up against those two never never look at smith look at him 343 pounds and he, he look with that he's got a little patch on him but he's a young guy hasn't played football in a couple of years and transferring from colorado I say this, in two years, he'll be a first-round pick. He's as impressive a big man as an athlete I've seen going around college football in the last three years. What about his feet with that size? They got good a pass feet, block out good feet. And I'll tell you, his offensive line coach, Pat Hill, is just excited about this guy. He is a giant. When he comes out of the locker room, the field tilts. First and goal for Arizona. The field right now tilting to the right. It's tilting to the end zone for Arizona is what it's doing. Malaulu, his first series. Strydnik, Greathouse, Johnson. Greathouse to the left. Maybe to the seven-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. What does Arizona like to do down here going in? You know, they're a running team, they're an option team, and they're a little di disappointed in their percentage of touchdowns down inside this red zone. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dick come off a strong play-action pass, like a tight end crossing pattern or something like that. Wouldn't UCLA blitz that if they play action down here? Well, they're liable to. They're liable to. It depends on the huddle call, of course. Second down and goal. Malaulu in Arizona down by seven. Keeps it on the option. Cuts, and he stopped at the six-yard line. A well-read option tackle that time by Brian Lockwood, number 91. Brian Lockwood is one of those reserve guys that played in the Shrine game as well. A 3.3 grade point average in high school. Outstanding young man. And he's one of these guys that does not pout and mope when he doesn't get to play very much but when he gets his opportunity to play he plays well now Bates comes off the Arizona sideline see what happens by not throwing on second down you that kind of offense now you put you into a more of an obvious passing down and that's what that's what they don't like Come on, Lock, Lock, Lock. high formation Strydnick in front of Greathouse Bates goes into a slot there's uh, Bates called timeout he must have uh, been confused walking out there the slot man called it a timeout used by Arizona Bobby Fields the defensive coordinator calling over the defense so with that timeout we'll break away and come right back it's 14 7 UCLA
a company This October at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ronnie Beal watching for the sideline. He led Arizona to its touchdown. George Malaulu in there. Dick Vermeil, I want you to take a look at this formation and predict what they might do on third and goal for me. Well, this is normally a running formation, but I, I would I would have guessed some kind of play action pass, not a run. Bates in motion. There's the play fake. Malaulu on the run, trying to get to gonna the run line, in. puts it away, in. touchdown, oh, Arizona! Oh, what an effort! Now they're going to fake deep to the tailback, deep to the tailback there. Now it's a fake that draws people in and gets a nice block from his fullback. He has run pass option. Now watch this young man. Watch, he's going to leap in there. Wow. And the extra point is added. Perfect. George Malaulu. So both quarterbacks have scored touchdowns here. And here he comes on into the end zone. Let's take a look. Ooh, and a good hit, you know, he's showing no ill effects of his knee operation last year. He tore up a knee up against California, and Eric Turner came over there and really belted him, but he bounces right back up. Person could get into this Pac-10 football. Yeah. See where you get confused is they say Veal is the runner and Malaula the passer. They can both do both, but Malaulu is a better passer and you know, has two years to go. What's your buddy Tommy going to do? A little onside kick again? <laughs> well, hey, don't ever go to sleep in any phase of the game with him over there calling signals. Believe me. We saw, uh, we saw the onside kick after safety a couple weeks ago. I'd never both. seen it. I'd always wanted to see it. And it was beautiful. How about the Bumaruski against Illinois that walked in from about 40 yards out? And they tried the Bumaruski again. I don't think California even knows the ball was put down. You know, the center of the guard kind of squatted on the ball. Costin was coming up quickly like he was going to kick it at him. They, they, have he all, stopped. they have all of John Baxter, the special teams coach in his first year at Arizona, does a fine job with these young kids. They have a couple great kickoff coverage guys, too, and Bray, number 14, does a great job of covering kickoffs and watching on tape. These guys play mind games with you. There's the short kickoff out of the hands of Brown, fielded at the 20-yard line by UCLA, out of bounds near the 30-yard line where it will be Tommy Maddox. Now, the difference between Maddox and the quarterbacks for Arizona is about, uh, what would you say, four and a half minutes of drive? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, Maddox has been scoring uh, almost too fast for the young defense, and it puts him back on the field too soon. It would be better for UCLA if they could control the ball and the clock a little bit better than they have been prior to these, uh, this game today. You know, he's directed 13 scoring drives uh, that uh, 11 of them were uh, less than three minutes and 15 seconds. Brown busting free first down UCLA and that was Bobby Rowland tackling it. Taking a look at the end zone watch the big mobile offensive lineman Vaughn Parker number 68 pull around and lead on this play good blocking at the point and then they bring the off guard he pulls around on the point there he look at boom he gets a nice kick out block opens up the hole and there they go. 8-12 in the first half. UCLA 14, Arizona 14. <laughs> first and 10 for the Bruins. Nobody's stopping anybody here. Brian Adams, number six, checks in at wide receiver. Brown again. This is what they've got to do. They've got to control the football. They've got to control it because Arizona's moving the ball too efficiently, both running and passing. If UCLA can do the same thing and it gets out into a shootout situation, then I think UCLA would have the edge. Coach Donahue, isn't this fun, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're loving it up here and he's hating every minute of it. Oh, no, he loves it. That's why he's down there. He loves it. Look at those veins in his neck. 
He'd like a little more defense. I know you <laughs> coaches. Defense and running game. This is strictly a fans game. From the shotgun, it's Maddox, number eight. Same number that Troy Aikman was such great success here. Receivers were covered, and he could not gain much ground that time. Good, Mentioned Troy good Aikman and uh, Dick, these numbers after four games, in fairness to Maddox, he's only a redshirt freshman. Aikman transferred in here from Oklahoma. So there's a difference in, in interceptions and uh, your feeling about Maddox versus Aikman at this point in their career. Well, from a coaching standpoint, I would, I would not want to compare him with anybody. Allow him to grow up and be himself and not put so much pressure on him, bring him to a stadium each week, someone expecting him to be a mature Troy Aikman. He's going to be a dandy. Let him take his time. Both Homer mentally Smith. and physically. Homer Smith telling us he's a no sweat kind of guy. Yeah. Under a pressure, no sweat that time. Just zips it into Moore's hands. That's a, you know something? That's an automatic uh, reaction by the quarterback. They taught him to do that versus this blitz. And it's Lewis. Lewis is the blitzer. Now he's supposed to come back. The receiver relieves the line of scrimmage. Bottom of your screen. Now you'll see the blitz. Now this is a side adjustment. He'll turn back right now and throw it. That's his release. He has been taught to do that. In fact, they walked through it again yesterday with just uh, shorts and uh, T-shirts on and football shoes. Not in a contact situation. Just to rehearse it one more time. Richardson checks in at wide receiver. He's in there with Miller. Fullback straight ahead across the 40-yard line. That big Smith, I keep saying that, uh, at that size. You know, his dad, Charlie, would play for the Oakland Raiders for you people in Northern California, 68 through 74, so you remember him. But I, I still believe I, I see a, a stallion down there that doesn't quite realize what he can do yet. And when he finds out, whoo. Second down and long for Maddox. Adams will go out to his right. Richardson is to his left. He shows the split running backs. His offensive line giving him enough time so far that he can send the backs out. He can get five receivers into a pattern. He keeps them this time, and he'll drop Green. off instead on the screen to Smith. 35. First down, UCLA. A very well-executed play before Lewis can make the tackle. Good old screen pass here. Now the fullback is going to set up and hold. The offensive guard here is going to set, and he's going to come out, Vaughn Parker, and get the kickout block. Now watch the quarterback as he drops. Fullback sets up inside. All right, now there goes... Vaughn Parker, 68. Now watch a kick out. Boom. Didn't have to do too much, but he was there. Formed that wall. Adams now to his left. Miller to his right as the wide receivers for UCLA on first and ten. The toss to Brown. Cut back. Across the 25-yard line. It'll put UCLA in second and short. You know, you just used the term cut back. That is so important to good, efficient outside running, especially with the eye toss. You get the defense stretched, and then you take it back, hoping that one of your offensive linemen has stopped the defense in pursuit somewhere and you find that crack. Who used to cut back against you for USC? Oh, oh I'll tell you. <laughs> I've, I've, seen, uh, I've seen all the way back to Mike Garrett days <laughs> cutbacks. I mean, okay. that's how old I am. O.J. Simpson. Second down. Charlie White. Jeez, now you give me a headache <laughs> thinking about those guys. Here's they a mistake. Toss to the left. Brown was cut off, trying to get his daylight. This will be... A third and short. Let's see. Close to the first down. And they got it. They got it by inches. They'll move the chains. Well, Maddox's parents are with Mark Jones. So let's go down and meet them. Mark? Brent, I'm with Glenda and Wayne Maddox. Uh, Glenda, you have a job with a major airline to see all of Tommy's games. Uh, how did that come about? Well, when we discovered that Wayne, Mark was, Tommy was probably going to go far away to school, we thought, you know, we've always been at everything they've ever done, and we thought, we just can't, you know, stay away. So we just thought that was a good option. Wayne, uh, today's game, Tommy doing pretty well. Uh, he's 50-50. Uh, he's he's doing okay. Play. We got a long way to go before it's over, though. And tell me, you two have to be the parents with the most frequent flyer points in all of America, and all of Division I football. Well, unfortunately, we don't get frequent flyer mileage, but um, <laughs> that would be nice. Thanks a lot for joining us, both of you, and uh, enjoy your trip here in Los Angeles. Brent, Dick, how many frequent flyer points do you guys have? We get a few. We'll be coming back to San Francisco to see Stanford next week against USC. Mark, I'll tell you the team that's getting the frequent flyer miles this weekend, Maine. 
They're going all the way from Maine over to Hawaii. I think they started about seven days ago, Coach, and they're en route. They're going to play Hawaii. They're going to make 10, 12,000, but what a great trip for those young men out of Arono, Maine. I know it, and you know, so it's really tough to play well when you get over there with all those grass skirts. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what always threw you off. Dick Domi, he'd love it over there. He coached in Hawaii successfully most of the last decade before moving to Tucson and Arizona. Maddox now back of the shotgun after the penalty. Throws incomplete. He was up high with that ball to Miller. <laughs> Maddox threw that ball, and he was so mad he started jumping up and down and I probably saying a few unkind words to himself. He knew he let one get by. You know, this year early, Lewis was extremely happy that they had put him in the defensive backfield. He came to Arizona as a running back and actually made some yards running as a running back. But yeah. after what's happened to him here today, maybe he's not so sure. Maybe he'd like to switch back again. Yeah. Did you see Professor Bobby Fields, the defensive coordinator, talking to the defense there? Miller to his left, and Moore, whom he overthrew. I think I misidentified Moore down in the end zone a short time ago. Miller has caught the two touchdown passes, and he has just brought the play onto the field now for Maddox. And, you see and Maddox will use a timeout. You know what That's his first. You know what happened? The fullback and tailback were talking to each other, and they, they both came up with the wrong answer, so they called timeout. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming right back. Heard from... I need. How about a nice tasteful hood ornament? No, actually, I was looking for a... Something in an air freshener? At Big A, we take our customers seriously. With Mark Jones, who's been over there listening to what some of the UCLA receivers have to say. Right well, now. they were hoping they'd get some tight man-to-man -man coverage down here going inside that red zone or inside the 20-yard line, and they were hoping for it. Let's see if they get what they're hoping for. It doesn't look like it right now. They look like they're going to get double man. Have to go to an inside receiver like a slot or back out of the backfield. They get up on Moore to the right from the shotgun. Maddox, he's covered, comes back into the middle. First down, UCLA inside the 10 yard line. Sean See, wills they, the receiver there. They doubled both outside guys and they went ahead and went to the back, coming out of the backfield. I think he's lined up right there and then comes back up inside. Sean Wills, number 37. See him setting up there. Now watch him come back on and out. They beats the one-on-one -on -one coverage. See, a linebacker should never allow that by back inside. That was Mike Parker, number 46, trying to take away that inside route. 16 yards, plenty of time left. 3.30 here in the first half. Basic eye, first and goal, UCLA. The toss, it's Brown to the five. Tell you, if I were going to run the eye toss at UCLA, I would always run it behind the tight end, Randy Austin, 95, because he is the best blocking tight end I've seen this year. He can really block the outside linebackers. There's Austin right there. He can really block you. He also, Dick, has Daly at the other tight end spot as Wills quickly returns and brings the play. This is second and goal for the Bruins. Wills is a better receiver, I think, uh, coming out of the backfield. That might be why he's coming in here. They got a chance to hit him if he breaks free. Maddox fires intercepted in the end zone. Didn't look an ill-advised throw for the young man. Something he will pick up later on as Arizona stops it with a terrific interception by Jeff Hammerschmidt. You're going to run a play-action pass, full flow. Now he's looking. He's got it back in the flat and the tight end of the corner. Here comes the ball inside out, and half Jeff Hammerschmidt picks off his sixth career pass interception. Interception. Last year against UCLA, he made the best interception I saw a safety make in any game last year. And he also hurt his knee in the same game. Very good defense. Hammerschmidt's intercept stops the Bruin drive. First and ten at the 20 with 2.36 to go here in the first half. The problem with that kind of action in the backfield, you were flowing in one way and throwing the ball the same way, and that pulls the safety into the play. It makes it easier on Hammersmith. Maddox threw a bad interception last week up at Pullman, and they ran it back for a touchdown. The flags come down. And let me remind everybody that coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report, 
Roger Twibel is going to tell you all about the Stanford upset of Notre Dame and South Bend today. Then a story you folks are going to want to see. Beth Ruiak is going to report on the great comeback of the University of Arizona's Kevin Singleton. Just a marvelous story. And we'll have the Prudential Play of the Week all coming your way at halftime. Two and a half minutes here, Coach, left in the first half. You mentioned he threw a bad interception. You have you ever seen anyone throw a good interception? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've seen guys come out of the hole and make great plays. Yeah. And, and 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 you don't fault him, but but, but I when really it was that obvious, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Th there's a young man we want to talk about. Kevin there's said, Mr. Singleton. I talked to him the other day and asked him about his strength. He says right now he is stronger than he was uh, prior to becoming ill. You folks who don't know, he was afflicted with leukemia, and his twin brother was able to help him out. His brother now playing with his. The New England Patriots, but I don't want to give the story. I don't want to. I don't want to give the story away. You're going to want to see it at halftime. Those of you who don't know it, I know down in Tucson, it's a very heartwarming story, and, and Beth was delighted to have an opportunity to do it. First down now. First and 15. Good defense. Kill. Straight ahead. Good defensive play then. So you have to get after that type of running attack on the line of scrimmage or beyond the line of scrimmage. You can't let them knock you back off the ball, and they did a good job there. You'll see what I'm talking about. Right in the center of your screen, you got the big offensive lineman coming off. You see the guard pulling right there. You can see they get good penetration right here and there. They don't allow him to clear that line of scrimmage. Great house, the tailback, set behind Stridnik. Bates in the slot to Malaulu's left. Great house to the 24-yard line. This is going to be third and long. Art Great House. One of many college football players that you run into who have already received an undergraduate degree and now working on a graduate one at Tucson. So Art Greathouse coming over to the sideline and a reminder that we've got some key shows coming your way on ABC. Tonight, baby makes three. Surprise. You got no... football next Saturday. The other problem. Pass UCLA okay. sideline deck. Here's coach Ed Kazarian, the offensive line coach here, giving them the instructions when they get back on the ball. Make sure you tell the ref they're up under your face mask. Let them know. Got it twice to you. Fine offensive line coach played here. Dick, meanwhile, we get word that Gray has been injured in the Bruins secondary, and he is out right now. How does that affect him? Well, they're thin back there. Deion Lambert, of course, is a starting corner. I don't see who he, I don't see what they have out there right now. Questionable as to whether or not Arizona can pick on an injury at that spot, but they'll try right away. Malaulu completes it to Vaughn. So immediately they pick up and go at that cornerback spot. They get a big first down with 145 to go. You see Malaula is doing a nice job. That's a delay to the outside. That's a delay pattern coming from the outside. You'll see it appear down here, coming inside here. He's dropped, dropped straight back. They're spread out there, spread the formation all the way across the field, open up those lanes. Strydnik fumbles. UCLA picks it up. Bruce Walker knocks the ball free, and number 92, Matt Werner recovers it. Matt Werner, number 92, aerospace engineering student. There's Walker, the freshman, stripping him. There goes the ball out there. That's it. Now, he cannot pick up that ball and advance it back there, but if they had crossed the line of scrimmage with the new rule, he could advance the football. There's Mr. Werner. He's excited about that play. What do you think, Homer Smith and Maddox will try to put it in the end zone right away after that turnover? Well, how much time do we have here? There's the injured Gray, the cornerback for UCLA, leaving them a little thin. And Tony Spino was the trainer there. They split the backs. Miller and Moore, they send them out. Brown incomplete. <laughs> He was trying to run that uh, little pattern underneath again there. Brian Brown, number 30. 
He's caught 31 balls in his career coming into this ball game, so you know that he can catch the football. It was just thrown behind him. Lewis at left corner near the top of your screen matched up with Moore, giving him a little more daylight than he did earlier in the game. He's off him five yards. Now Maddox from the shotgun, looking in that direction. Incomplete. They cut underneath as Lewis dropped out. And we get a report that it's not an injury, but an upset stomach, oh, really? which is sideline gray. And that's why he's headed over to the locker room now. So perhaps he'll be back in the uh, in the second half. 124 to go right now. And what were they attempting to do against Lewis with that pattern, Dick? Well, he was playing back off much looser, and they tried to beat him on the corner move. Actually, they had a step on him, but I think he read that the ball was thrown too high and just relaxed and let it go out of bounds. They now bring him to the short side, and he will defend more. They're coming with that blitz again. Inside handoff to Brown. They get to the 30-yard line. Crowd did not like that call. Well, it's a good call because every once in a while, those kind of plays just pop clean up inside. Was he trying to position for a field goal attempt would be my question. Dalawiso, his field goal kicker, we've got... That's a 47-yarder for Dalawiso. He's 0 for 1 in that uh, distance in his career. He hasn't kicked many field goals. That's what Terry was attempting to do that time. I Maddox he, is the holder, and he wanted to say something to him. I think he would have liked to have had a 25-yard run or a touchdown run. Yeah, <laughs> really. Exactly. <laughs> Preferably. Timeout. Time That's their last timeout with 41 seconds to go. Well, what do you think? Maybe we'll see our second fake field goal. No, I think Terry will go ahead and try to pop this one through. That 47-yard field goal is a makeable field goal. Now, he's not the most experienced guy, but he is 7 for 9 this year. He's a walk-on out of San Diego Grossmont City College. Notre Dame, and the last time we checked, Florida State was losing big. Michigan was winning. Stanford getting the job done. You know, Tim Belton, our uh, producer down in the truck, is delighted. He was a basketball player up there for Stanford. It's going to be a homecoming for you next week, Kim. I expect you to take good care of everybody on the crew, cameramen included. <laughs> Trojans and Stanford next Saturday, 12.30 Pacific time. We'll be delighted to welcome you to that one, see our old friend Dennis Green. You know, I'm sure that Larry Smith's probably sitting home, but... Uh, you know, and hearing that kind of thing, he loves they, because they play about. Washington State tonight. To, <laughs> they said, oh, gosh, let us no, just I, get by this one tonight, guys. <laughs> well, it was a great, speaking of Coach Smith, what a marvelous comeback that was against Ohio State after they'd been battered. I was oh. up in Seattle following that setback, and the, the folks up there were ecstatic because the road, the road to Pasadena on New Year's Day, folks, is going through Seattle. You can write it down right now. Not only do they have a tough team, but they've got the favorable schedule. That's why this one is so important to UCLA and Arizona. Aloiso with the field goal attempt on its way. A 48-yarder. No good. We'll stay tied at 14. That's no good. And, and now the NCAA next year plans to take uh, four foot ten inches out of that goalpost to make it narrower. And they're not and they're not moving the hash marks. That's going to be a narrow goalpost from those hash marks. Here he is. He has very little experience. So every time he misses one, that's a negative because all he needs is to hit a few like that and he can grow quickly. He has a good strong kickoff leg. 70 yards. He didn't even kick in uh, field goals in junior college. Played soccer. 70 yards for Arizona to negotiate, Dick. Well, this is not the kind of a situation they're really good at, but I watched them go through their two-minute uh, fast offense on the field the other day, and they, they were good against themselves. Hampton, the lone setback behind Mallory. Under pressure, incomplete. Extreme pressure. <laughs> You'll see what we're talking about in terms of extreme pressure. They back the offensive line. He's coming right around the outside there. Boom. You got three guys hit him at the same time. Shalinsky, 98, on top. 32 seconds. Arizona with one timeout remaining. I think see, that's very close. You know, if I, I, I would think here it'd be make sure you don't make a mistake and, and turn the ball over here and let them return one in on you right now. You're 14 to 14. Hey, be satisfied. McGill on the swing. That's that little option screen. 
Third down. Clock is running. The difference, though, in the passing is that UCLA has hit two long passes. Right. Maddox to Miller for touchdowns. Yeah. Arizona has ground out two touchdowns. And, and the two quarterbacks have scored them. The other difference is uh, Malaula is allowed to throw the ball on the other side of his body. <laughs> Looks different, doesn't it? Talk about somebody who's truly ambidextrous. Yes. A good shortstop, and folks, he brings it right-handed to the first baseman. Now, I've seen him throw the football on the practice field right-handed, and he throws it well. They won't let him work both ways. Over conferring with the Arizona coaching staff. They have done a great job with that entire athletic department down in Tucson, Arizona. Said Dempsey, one of the finest ADs in America down there. Great basketball team going now. Lute Olson has put the show on the road down in the desert. This is the only team in the Pac-10, though, that has not played in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. And oh, how they would love to get here for one. But what's interesting is that when this stadium was built in the 20s, eventually Arizona actually played a game, a regular season game, before UCLA ever did, back in 29, 30, and 32. Boy, you're a historian today. I'm going to give you some credit for homework. The granddaddy. <laughs> Come to the Rose Bowl. All those folks have clogged the freeways watching those gorgeous pictures of the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Everybody in Southern California hoping it comes up hail and sleep one of these years. Stop the immigration. Open up the freeways. Third down now for Arizona. They're going for the big, looks like here anyway, the big Malahulu. Fires complete to Bond into Bruin territory. He, he is inside greasy, the 40 he? yard line. Two seconds left. Whistle stops the clock. And Costin to attempt a last second field goal. Arizona will try to squeeze one out here. They faked once. Costin's career long is 51 yards. This one here is 54 yards. Down. This time he's kicking, but it is going to be short. So they will go to the locker room tied at Danby here at Pasadena. Big stories all across the country. Let's send you down to Roger Twivel in New York. Roger. Thank you very much, Brad. Well, the story.